In this next video, we're going to look at inserting an Excel table or creating an Excel table. We're going to begin once again by opening up our file. The name of our file is FIT 1003 Chapter 2 Review. And we want to look at the sheet by the name of table. So we want to click here and open up that sheet by the name of table. After opening it up, we're going to see that we have the beginnings of a list or a table. I'm going to open it up a little bit. Now, the key to any type of table or an Excel table are the top rows, the header rows, which are commonly referred to as field names. Now, the importance of field names is that they allow us to sort our table, and not only to sort our table, but also to filter our table. And what filter means is to select only certain records. Looking up here, we have field names, or by the name of quantity and stock, our item number, product name, retail price, all field names size, packaging, category, and stock level. So those are our header rows or our header row and our field names. Let's begin by highlighting our future Excel table. So we're going to highlight from here to here. We've highlighted our list. We want to change it into an Excel table. Click on the Insert tab. And then click on Table. We get a dialog box to say that's asking us do we want to create a table within the range that we just highlighted. A3 to H68, but it's very important that it's always checked off that my table has headers because those headers will eventually become our field names. So you want to have the my table has headers, which it does right here. Click on OK. We know that we've been successful because now our field names all have a drop down menu next to them. So each of our field names have a drop down arrow next to them, which will allow us to sort by field name and also to filter by field names. So we have an Excel table because each of our field names now have the drop down arrow next to them. Now I'm going to come in and show you once again a, a powerful aspect of Excel tables. I'm clicked within cell I13, and I'm going to type in revenue. Hit enter. And what's happened is that Excel has guessed that we need to add a new field name by the name of revenue. And we have revenue with the drop down arrow. Underneath that, there is no information. What we're going to do is we're going to create a formula that will fill in the revenue field. All formulas begin with an equal sign. And we know that revenue is equal to quantity multiplied by retail price. So our equal sign. We're going to click on our first quantity multiplied by our first retail price. So it's quantity in stock multiplied by retail price. Click on the check mark. And everything has been copied all the way down. 
let's highlight column I. The entire column is highlighted. And let's change it to the accounting format. So it's easier to make out. Let's come back within our table. Once again, within that cell number, or that cell, I14, we see that we have a formula, quantity in stock, multiplied by retail price. That's where we're getting that information of 1995. How it was determined is that we use a formula, quantity in stock times retail price. Next, let's look at sorting our Excel table. What I strongly recommend is always to click within the table directly beneath one of your field names. Once again, you can see my cursor is clicked in over here, directly beneath one of my field names. Next, right click, move down to sort, and I strongly recommend always to move down then to custom sort. Gives you a lot more latitude and power. Click on custom sort. We get a dialog box that allows us to sort by multiple fields or columns. I'm going to begin my sort by selecting the field name called category. Sort on the values within the category field name. We have the ability to order from A to Z or from Z to A. Click on OK. And what's happened is that our entire Excel table has been sorted by category, extract, herb, seasoning, also by rub. If you come up to the field name, you can even see a small arrow denoting that we've done a sort. Now the beauty of sorting is that we can sort by multiple fields or multiple levels. Let's go in there click directly underneath one of our field names, right click, sort, custom sort. It's showing right now that we've sorted initially by category. I want to add another level. And the next level is going to be by product name. To add another level, I click on the button add level and then choose the next field name that I want to sort by. I'm going to select product name, still order A to Z in ascending order. So by making this selection, what Excel is going to do is take my table and sort first by category and then by product name. Click OK. And what you see is we have our primary sort by category, then by product name. So we've done our sort. Next, what we're going to do is insert a total row. And how you do that is by clicking within your table, click on the design tab, and then check off total row. And what you see are our field names. And with a new row showing totals, and something has already been done here, inserted a total. So let's click on that 101878 and see how that number was arrived at. Click in here. You have a drop down menu. Hit that arrow. And Excel has now summed that information. So we're going to leave it there. So that would be our total revenue. 
let's come over here and get the average price and how you can do that once again is along this total row to get our average price we click in this cell click on the down arrow and click on average and what's happened here is that Excel has gone in within our table and taken the average price to get once again a sum of the quantity in stock we can click in here hit our down arrow and click on sum and lastly within this cell we want to get a count click here down arrow count now the beauty of this total row is that it's dynamic so it will change based upon how we filter that table right now everything is all showing but I can filter my table by coming over to the category field as an example click on the down arrow right now all categories are all selected they all have check marks next to them by clicking on select all everything is now unselected or deselected and it gives me the ability to choose just one category and let's say I want to choose herb click on OK and what you see now is that only the herb category has been chosen but more importantly is that all of my totals have been adjusted so the quantity in stock just for the herbs is 1855 there's nine instances or nine items average price once again if we want to see what that is the average price is 869 and the total revenue for those products is fifteen thousand forty one dollars ninety three cents we know that there has been some filtering because if we come up here and hover over the field name there is a Y and when I hover over it it's telling me that I've done a filtering by category where I'm only selecting herb I can click on that field name again change it so I'm now choosing seasoning check mark next to seasoning okay so I'm filtering it what has happened is that we've chosen only seasoning and then our totals have all been adjusted I could go in here and filter even on my quantity so I can do multiple filters on the various fields click over here number filter because that's what we're dealing with greater than let's try greater than 150 click OK hover over here with a quantity in stock you can see that it has been filtered there's a Y here and it's showing greater than 150 we have a filter over here where the seasoning has been chosen as our category so it's tremendously powerful and it is dynamic as you make changes your totals change and of course the look of your table changes by the way that you're filtering it
Next, to convert that back to the way it had looked before. What we need to do is come back. We're within the table. Click on Design. Remove your total row. It's now gone. So we've unchecked it. Also, we can go back to the fields that we have filtered. Click on them. Clear filter from the quantity in stock. And for our category field, click on the Y and once again clear the filter. Or we could have just checked it off. So it's now looking pretty much like it had first looked, looked like. It is still an Excel table because we can see our field names all have the down arrow. But to actually bring it back to a non-Excel table, to bring it back to its original state, what we have to do is click within the table, Design tab, and come over here and click on Convert to Range. We get a dialog. Do you want to convert the table to a normal range or to its original state? Click Yes. And what you see now is that the field names no longer have the narrows, the arrows next to them or the drop downs. Pretty powerful concept. Excel tables. And always to keep in mind that Excel tables are dynamic. They can change, they can grow, they are not static. Thank you.